There are some interjections from an editor persona, but The Sorrows of Young Werther is primarily an epistolary novel. That is to say, it is told in a series of letters. These letters are all from Werther to his friend Wilhelm, and it's all one-sided. We don't get Wilhelm's replies, although sometimes there is kind of evidence of what he has said as Werther alludes to advice he has had from Wilhelm. Werther can be selective with important information. For example, he mentions but glosses over the fact of having had a rage outburst on finding Albert and Lotta together. All of this puts the novel in an unusual place for its time. Early readers of this kind of book would have expected the text to include some sort of moral evaluation of what's going on and the characters contained. This is lacking from the sorrows of young Werther. We have to provide it ourselves. So the reader ultimately is in the position of Wilhelm, receiving the letters and judging Werther for his emotions and actions. At any point when he implores his adversary not to laugh, he's pretty much creating the suggestion that we might well choose to laugh at him. Structurally, The Sorrows of Young Werther is simple. There are three main characters in a love triangle, Werther, Albert and Lotte. In some translations, she'll be called Charlotte. The main story accounts of Werther's love of Lotte from its outset to its termination in his suicide. Subplots and anecdotes tend to duplicate Werther's love for Lotte, or to illustrate psychopathologies similar to his own. Werther is an odd name. It's evocative of the German word Werth to mean worth or value. We meet Werther as a young man of talents who hasn't found his place. He is eager, he is naive. He has some means and education, but as he settles in the countryside, he reports feeling lonely and alienated, despite being captivated by natural beauty and rustic simplicity. The first thing Werther is told about Lotte is not to fall in love with her because she's engaged to someone else. But fall in love he does, and how. Lotte is beautiful and she reads the right kind of books. She also tends to display a maternal affection towards her siblings. Lotte has been forced into the position of, well, being her own mother and her father's de facto wife in household management, if not as love object. Lotte does encourage Werther's love of her. She's unnecessarily tactile with him. She spends way too much time with him. And when she's trying to think of whether he could be married off to one of her friends, she can't bear the idea of him being with someone else. When Albert returns to spend time with Lotte, he tries to tolerate Werther, but problems arise because of Werther's jealousy. In letters to Wilhelm, Werther continues to idealize Lotte, but he refers to his love as a torment and a demon. At the opening of part two, we find Werther in very different circumstances. He is secretary to a minister on path to a career in government, but there are problems. In letters, Werther reports friction with the ambassador, blaming Wilhelm for this situation as the person who urged him to seek this employment. Finally, Werther resigns after he is publicly humiliated for outstaying his welcome at an aristocratic gathering, causing a scene, causing later gossip, and extinguishing sparks with a possible new love interest. This sounds like a very different set of incidents, but really Werther has made the same mistake twice. Earlier we saw that three into two wouldn't go, Lotta wasn't available because she was already with Albert. Here again, Werther is trying to go where he simply cannot. At court, the restriction is one of rank. Funnily enough, he describes the problem with Lotta as being of rank as well. He refers to himself as being second in her heart. The problem with that status is that it's useless unless the person who is first in her heart vacates the position. Others do have a sense of Werther's worth. His resignation is resisted by his employers, 
and after this he's invited to spend time in the country seat of a prince. But Werther complains that the prince's tastes are too educated and conventional, and that the prince values him for the wrong things. The prince appreciates Werther's talents rather than his heart, our hero says. Werther requests a commission in the army, which the prince refuses for reasons which Werther does not share with his correspondent, but at which we might well guess as being temperamental. At a loose end again, Werther gravitates back to orbit Lotte. Despite sensing that Lotte prepares a poison that will destroy us both, Werther can't stay away. On her side, Lotte is now married more aware of propriety, more aware of Albert's wishes. But Werther misreads all of Lotte's emotion as encouragement of his affections. Werther is obsessed and unhappy, finding no consolation in religion. He writes to Lotte that one of us must die, and for much of the novel, Werther's death seems inevitable. He promises, tries, and fails to stay away. Finally, Lotte unthinkingly complies with Werther's request to borrow Albert's pistols, and Werther shoots himself. On Werther's journey to death, we are told other stories which illuminate his own position. One is of a madman Werther meets, who is picking flowers, and who seems also to have lost his mind for love of Lotte, whom he knew while working for her father. Another is the former servant whose love for his widowed employer has cost him his job, and he has gone on to murder the new servant, his replacement. But he hasn't recognised that the widow's family would never allow her to marry a servant. Like Werther, this man's error is not to recognise where he simply won't be allowed to fit. Albert has said that suicide is easier than forbearance, but Werther likens suicide to political revolution in a society weary of oppression. He sees suicide as an art form, and Albert finds Werther impervious to reason. In the last part of the lecture, drawing on some later psychological theory, I'm going to suggest how Goethe intends us to read the character of Werther.